It's day 48 of this sweet potato germination experiment. There's been astonishing growth over the last few days. So previously I had a vine crawling along the corner between the door and the wall over there. And that basically fell over. So one day I saw this biomass, you know, foliage missing. But what happened was the vine had crawled around the back because it fell down. So I redirected it and all the leaves were pointing the wrong way yesterday but now they're all pointing the right way so that means there had to have been a little growth in all these petioles to do some phototropic work and basically spin everything around so it faces the sun and you know the shoot apical marrow stem is trying to climb upwards i can demonstrate here and also this vine everything is so robust you know, the leaves are huge, had leaves that were basically really droopy and saggy. They were falling on top of each other. It looked like the plant was going to die or something. But that was essentially the first day um, before this vine fell over. So previously it was just completely upright. And, you know, I thought maybe it was lacking water, but the next day I hadn't watered either. But by the time I stepped out onto the balcony, everything had recovered. So, nevertheless, I watered yesterday and um, just to ensure that these uh, thirsty vines get all the water they need. And again, you can see a phototropic response for this vine at the end as well. So, this is vine number three. It has a healthy shoot apical meristem as well, and you'll notice the leaves come out kind of purple and folded like this, and then they unfold and make a transition to green. You know, they're kind of that color, and then basically after a while they turn a nice green like this. Now, it's a different kind of green from the honeydew leaves. As you can see right there, these are a lighter green, and the leaves aren't as robust. Um, these have a simpler vein structure and leaf structure in my opinion. They're just kind of spade shaped straight up. Um, honeydew leaves have a lot more nuances to them. I'll show you an example right there. They have serrated edges and you know kind of a complex web of you know veinage so to speak. So I just refilled the water tray on day 47 yesterday and it seems like some kind of moth drowned in there and that looks like roots to me so maybe this thing has developed pretty robust roots you know. I'll keep an eye on this and see if the bottom fills up with roots. Um, if it does there's nothing more I can do but you know I hope the roots don't rot just because they're immersed in water all the time. So regarding leaves that are buried to the hill, this one is a good example of one that's dying. And here's a new shoot system. I'm going to call this vine number four. It's fourth in the pecking order. Now I don't think this is the one, the secondary shoot that I saw on top of the sweet potato surface, you know, before I buried everything. It just seems to have come up in the same location as all the others. So here is a huge robust leaf from vine number one and you know all those grains of crystalline salt or whatever that was are gone and this leaf looks very healthy. I mean I'm looking at all the other leaves and I don't see anything as well. So you know there are certain problems with growing this thing indoors and you know who knows what that was due to uh, it could have something to do with the fact that I had two rotting potatoes a gold potato and a russet potato in here so this one is also from vine number one it just seems like after I took these things outside um, you can sort of see some kind of residue that resembles grains of sand but you know it's a lot less noticeable there's nothing crystalline you know dirty looking about this foliage anymore. It seems like once I took these things outside and put them on the balcony and started watering a lot, like all those problems just went away. And you know, maybe I wasn't watering enough and that caused the problem. 
But you know, I sprayed insecticide, I killed all the fungus gnats living in the water tray. But you know, everything's been just fine after I moved them to the balcony. And I think this is vine number two. A closer look at vine number two's stem. I mean, you know, these stems don't become woody at all. They're just very flexible and keep getting longer. But all those so-called whiteheads or things that resembled whiteheads on human skin are basically gone. So I don't know what the deal is. Maybe there was an excess of solutes that the plant was trying to get rid of. Um, they're a little bit more noticeable here. And you know, with just no water in the soil, the plant was trying to excrete crystalline forms of things it was in excess of. So this is the shoot apical meristem of plant one. You can just see how these are bustling with activity. Um, unlike with honeydew, it just seems there's a lot more growth at very fast rate. And this is vine number two's shoot apical meristem. It's pretty much the same story, I mean, it'd be pretty hard to count how many leaves there are. Although at this point we know that marrow stems like that are basically suppressed by auxin produced in the shoot apical marrow stem itself over here. But essentially this is a defense against herbivores, you know, you got to be ready to start growing in all available marrow stems after something eats all the tender buds at the top. And here is shoot apical marrow stem number three. Overall the growth has just been amazing and I expect this to basically fill up my balcony very very soon. Okay it's day 54 of this sweet potato germination experiment and as you can see this thing is growing like a real beast, a real monster. So these first two vines have just grown all the way out here and they keep curving up due to phototropism. There are no tendrils, so this is not messy. Uh, these are much more robust vines compared to honeydew. So tendrils optional. And you know, all the leaves on this vine number one basically face the sun very quickly after I repositioned everything. If you'll remember, I originally had this entire vine uh, up growing vertical against the corner or my solar reflectors and one day it just fell down under its own weight and it readjusted very quickly. So these leaves look very healthy and they're all big. One thing I noticed that's weird um, is that some days on the smaller vines, like around here, uh, mostly vine number two, I would say sometimes all these leaves just look droopy, like there's not enough water. But then the next day I'll look out on the balcony and they'll all be like this, very healthy looking. So I don't know what's going on but I've been watering a lot um, because I know this plant is no doubt a major water hog based on the size of these leaves. So vine number one here is just huge and it has all these giant leaves I can measure them but um, you know I would say that's let's see 13 14 centimeters long maybe 12 across uh, or 11 and that's a really big one and then it kind of curls and goes all the way here and the center is kind of a convoluted mess um, but you can see there's still a lot of stuff going on in there and new leaves and new systems keep popping out um, this is vine number three that's the stem right there. It's got these purple young leaves. So it would appear that there are three main purple reddish you know large vines coming out but there's also a fourth system in my opinion. Uh, it's right here. Uh, you can see a shoot apical marrow stem there. I don't know how many vines are going to come out of this but um, we're going to have at least four and you know, there are some leaves that are sort of buried at the bottom. I think those will die, especially if I decide to overlay all of this with sand. Um, now that I have this all outdoors, there are fungus gnats again, but uh, that's not really a problem, you know, as long as they don't get indoors. But I'm probably still going to spray some insecticide in the 
water tray down there to kill them off because I'm seeing more these days. It's day 56 of the sweet potato germination experiment. So the leaves are very, very healthy. There's no more drooping problem every other few days. Um, all the leaves are, you know, very rigid with turgor pressure. They're huge and very robust. And these leaves are a lot more robust than honeydew leaves. Honeydew leaves are fragile in comparison. Either that or I just subjected my honeydew plants to so many traumas early on that they didn't come out too well, but this is a case where almost everything went right. And you know, the tuber itself never rotted like the other two potato species. So these leaves are as healthy as can be. And here's just a close up to show you the vein patterning on these leaves. Let's see, you have a center there where it meets with a petiole. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. There's like five veins, you know, flanking to the side. So then you have the central vein and you have a bunch of veins branching off of that. So let's see, it kind of alternates. It's more sloppy for, you know, the veins that derive from this central vein that uh, splits the leaf in half. You can actually eat these leaves. They're no different from any other, you know, leafy vegetable greens and a lot of people do, you know, stir fry these and whatnot.